Hi, this is Rachel, and we're going to look at finding missing lengths and angles in right angle triangles using trigonometry. So I have three different questions here. In the first two, I need to find missing side lengths, and in the last one, I need to find a missing angle. So before we start answering any of these, we should be familiar with our acronym or equation for trigonometry. So it may be something that looks like this, SOKOTOA, or it may be something in a longer format. So I'll, I'm going to do one of each. So we'll talk about the longer format as they come up in case you recognize those easier. So let's start with this left hand triangle. So the first thing I need to do is identify my hypotenuse, my opposite and my adjacent. Now the hypotenuse has already been identified. It is the longer side, it's the diagonal opposite the right angle. I now need to identify what my other two sides are. So on the right, I've got my side X that is opposite the angle. So that is my opposite side. And if you're not comfortable with doing this, please do see my previous video on identifying the hypotenuse opposite and adjacent. And that means that this side is the adjacent. So I have been given my hypotenuse and I have been asked to find my opposite, this side x. Okay, so using the hypotenuse and opposite I can consult my, my equation or my acronym to find out which of these I have to use. So I'm using the hypotenuse h and opposite o so it's the sine one I have to use. So it's that. Now, some of you may be more familiar with it looking something like that, probably with opposite and hypotenuse written out fully. I'm extremely lazy, so I'm not going to write those out fully, but opposite is op, hypotenuse is hip. Um, and this symbol here is a theta. It may also say X instead of theta for angle. Okay, so we've got our sine angle is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So my, I'm going to start filling in these values. So my angle is 34 degrees. I always use that angle. I don't use the right angle. So sine 34 is equal to the opposite, which we don't know, so I'm just going to put that in as x over the length of the hypotenuse, which is 12. Okay, so now I need to rearrange this equation to give me x on its own. So I need to times both sides by 12. And if you're not sure what you're doing here, go and have a look at my videos on rearranging equations. But because we've got a division here, we are multiplying both sides by 12. We're doing the opposite. So that gives me sine 34 times 12 is x. So you will need a calculator for these. So I'm going to do sine 34, sine 34, and I can press equals if I like, times 12. There we go. So sine 34 times 12 gives me x and x is 6.71 and my units are centimeters because it's just a length of the side. Lovely. So that's the first one done where we found the length of the opposite. Now for the middle triangle. So again the first thing I'm going to do is identify my hypotenuse opposite and adjacent. So my hypotenuse is the long diagonal opposite the right angle. So this is my hypotenuse. My angle is here, so my opposite is the side opposite it, which is this one. And my adjacent is the side next to it, which is this one. So again, let's see what we've been given and what we need. So we have been given this side, which is the adjacent, and we need 
side A, which is the hypotenuse. So A and H, we are looking which one of these contains them. So it's the middle one, cos. Cos con contains A and H in its formula. None of the other do. So it's the one that looks like that. Or you may see it like that. And again, I've used an X this time instead of a sigma. So this may look more familiar to you with an X. But again, that X is just the angle. All right, so again, I'm gonna input my numbers. So my angle is 55. So cos 55 is equal to the adjacent, which we know is 15, divided by the hypotenuse, which is A. We don't know that yet, so I'm gonna leave that as A. Okay. Now with this one, we need to do a bit more rearranging. So the easiest way to think about these types of formulae is to swap what's on the left of the equals and what's on the bottom. So if I do that, that gives me A is 15 over cos 55. Lovely. If I grab my calculator again, so this time I'm going to do cos 55 is equal to that and I'm going to do 15 divided by it. So 15 divided by and I'm going to use this answer button. So using that tells the calculator when I press it that the number I want to use is what is currently on the screen, what it's just done. So it's that cos 55. So 15 divided by answer and that gives me a is equal to 26.2 and again it's a length so it's centimeters so that means my hypotenuse is 26.2 and you can sort of check it common sense wise because you'll know the hypotenuse is the longest side and this is longer than all the other sides we've been given well the one side we've been given perfect Okay, and finally, this last one. Now this is a bit different. This is where we're finding a missing angle, not a missing side, but I'm still going to identify my three sides. So I've got my hypotenuse here, got my opposite down here, and my adjacent on the right. Okay, so this time I have been given two sides. So I've been given the opposite and the adjacent and I'm being asked to find angle B. That's this one here. That angle there. So which of the trigonometric functions uses the opposite and adjacent? Well it's this last one, opposite adjacent, it's tan, toa, or again, you may see it written tan x is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so like with the others, I'm gonna start off by popping some numbers in. So this time my angle is just b. I don't know it yet. My opposite is five and my adjacent is eight. Okay, so tan b and I'm gonna do five divided by eight and I'm actually gonna pop it in a calculator, five divided by eight, and that gives me 0 0.625. There we go. So now I know that tan of the angle is 0 0.625. So in order to get b, I need to do the inverse. So it's tan to the minus one of 0 0.625, and that'll give me B. So shift tan, and that gives me my tan to the minus one, 0 0.625, there we go. And that gives me an angle B of 32.0 degrees. 
and that's to three significant figures or one decimal place. That's why I've put that zero there. So that is three examples that we might be given of how to use trigonometry, how to find missing sides and missing angles as well.